Hey YouTube people, as promised, I'm going to show you how you can take a Surface Pro 7 Plus or a Surface Pro X and upgrade the SSD. Now, Microsoft will charge you if you want to step from a 256GB i7 to a 1TB i7, a whopping $800 uh, just to, move, to get an SSD <laughs> uh, from 256 to 1TB. Now, uh, lots of other manufacturers are giving one terabyte hard drives uh, in computers that cost $800. So, it, I mean, it's an extreme markup uh, that Microsoft is, is pulling there. Uh, well, there's a solution, and I can save you about $600, I think. So, if you get the Surface Pro 7 Plus, uh, it costs $1599. Uh, if you wanted to step up to the one terabyte version, it is $2499. Uh, which means you need to pay $800. Well, uh, there's a way to harvest a very top tier M2-2330 uh, SSD. And it's this guy right here, the CalDigit 1TB Tough Nano. Now, these are kind of hard to find, but they come in 512GB and 1TB gigabyte versions. I'll put a link in Amazon below where you can pick these up uh, in the 512GB version. Uh, but there's also a one terabyte version that is available floating around out there. So I was able to source a one terabyte version. So by doing so, uh, inside here is a Toshiba uh, Kyoxia, which I, I think is their new branding. Uh, but it's actually a top tier 2230 drive and it is faster uh, than the 256 drive I have in here. I was able to complete the swap and now I have a one terabyte uh, Surface Pro 7 even though I purchased the 256 gigabyte version. It works great um, and this guy you can pick up for around $220. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the steps of harvesting the SSD and it fits right in the back. Remember you need the Pro 7 Plus or a Surface Pro X in order to do this. So let's go ahead and get started on the procedure. Okay, so let's open this guy up and see if we can get a drive out of it. Really nice packaging. This is actually a really cool drive. It's ruggedized and uh, feels really solid. So. Got some USB-C cables in there, uh, USB-A to USB-C as well, but we're more interested in this guy. And the first step is going to be uh, removing it from this little rubberized container there. Makes it even smaller. That's even smaller than if you look at a Samsung T T3. It's even smaller than that. S step one. Gonna use a spudger. Just exploring. There we go. Okay, so the way to get uh, this out, it's a little tricky, but there's some there's a PCB that has holes on it. And because there's there's a hole on it, you can kind of hook something around it, like a, a thin screwdriver, and kind of just pull bend it out slightly using that hole as a uh, point of purchase to be able to pull it out and there we go that heat pads really not coming off very cleanly but we want to get a look at what's underneath and hopefully you can see that this is a coxia which is a Toshiba and it's a 1024 gigabyte drive. 
we've got it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out at this point. And that just lifts up with a kind of a lever and we can pull it out gently. And we've got a one terabyte SSD. Now I'm gonna put my old uh, Surface SSD back in this tray and then I'll have a little 256 gigabyte uh, card to move around. So now that we've got our, our one terabyte drive uh, out of this Tough Nano for a fraction of the price of upgrading uh, to the one terabyte version for Microsoft, we're gonna go ahead and uh, see what it looks like to open up that Surface Pro 7 Plus. Okay, so now uh, what I'm gonna do is if you have an old phone, you probably have some sort of SIM removal tool and I'm gonna use that on this and from what I hear, it's magnetic and it should lift off just like that. And this is a Torx screw, so you want to make sure that you have a Torx capable um, screw before you get started so you don't end up having to close it back up. And if let's just look, you can see on the back of this tray, there's a little magnet up there um, that, that encloses it. And we're just going to... very gently. You don't want to strip this screw at all. And also be sure to turn off your surface first. Power it down completely. Don't just shut it down. You need it, to, sorry, don't just like let, have it be in sleep mode. You need it completely powered off. Got that screw. And now this should just Come up and pull out. There we go. Now it's kind of enclosed. Um, so what I'm going to do with with the other drive is I may try to put some of my own uh, thermal pads on it just to keep the the heat down if okay so here are the two drives side by side you can see they've got the same pin out it's m2 2330 and i just have this thermal pad um, and i'm going to just cut out a little piece to put on top of the new ssd just for fun this is not necessary if you don't have a thermal pad i don't think you would actually have to worry about it but I figure as long as I'm here I may as well now like I say this is probably not necessary at all but I figure why not nowadays SSDs will tend to perform better if they're kept cooler uh, on certain models. I don't know if that's the case with this one, but there we go. That's on there perfectly. So uh, next we're going to run the software and do a factory restore. So I'll show you what that looks like and we'll go from there. Okay, so you're going to take your surface recovery image that you've downloaded from the Microsoft website. I have made a video on how to do this, but you're going to drop it on here. I'll put a link to that video uh, in the description, but you'll just drop your USB with the factory firmware on it. You're going to hold the volume down key and then press the power key until you see and then let it go. Okay, so the, the key press you're going to do is you're going to hold down the volume button and uh, then press the power key while you hold down the volume button until the Windows logo appears.
and that's going to allow it to boot from the USB drive. Uh, I'm going to choose your language, keyboard layout. Sorry, we're going to click recover from a drive. And we're going to say just remove my files. And we're going to hit recover. So we'll let this process finish and uh, once Windows is up and running, I'll, we'll take a look and make sure that the partitions were all created correctly. And if that is, this probably there's probably nothing else you need to do, you're done. But we'll take a look anyways. Okay, and so straight back into Windows. Uh, we didn't have to do anything at all, just that one button. It reinstalled Windows, used the full drive, and we are good to go. Now I just want to show you some benchmarks showing the original drive, now comparing it to the Toshiba drive. Okay, so here is the performance uh, difference after installing that one terabyte drive. You can see the read was about the same uh, in the sequential, uh, but in the Q1 T1, it actually was double the read performance on the new drive, the, the one terabyte drive. Uh, 4K random reads were a little bit better, and uh, at both Q depths, they were improved on the new drive. Write speeds increased by a large amount from 1071 to 1844, and uh, from 974 to 1380. Uh, the Q depth 32 4K writes actually were a tiny bit worse, but uh, the one, the the Q1 4K writes were better. So almost every single metrics. Uh, on the new one terabyte drive uh, is better. So uh, it seems to be working just fine. I've had no issues with any sleep or anything. Uh, it's just like a normal uh, like a, a normal one terabyte uh, surface. So really happy with the upgrade. Uh, really easy to do. So let's uh, let's go for a recap.